Patricia, you told me and our team here that you have a rather intense escape story. Mm. Escape. Escape story, is that right? I wouldn't call it escape. Okay. I would I, I do have to call it a choice. Okay. Um I I could have chosen something else. Mm. So I'm not gonna say like escape. Um but it's a let's call it a, a a refugee story maybe. Refugee story. Yeah, maybe we can call it that. Start me from the top. I'm from Puerto Rico. I grew up in Caguas. And uh, my mom's Puerto Rican. She's from Piedras, and my father is African American from Philadelphia. Okay. Uh, and so, I think I have not met African American Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico. I think my family is very unique mm. when it comes to culture and perspective, and just like being so worldly and. And versatile, and I, I love my parents for for uniting these two cultures so beautifully yeah. with me and my 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 brother and my sister. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, he's been there for thirty years. Wow! And he's still there. What brought him there? A dream. He just wanted to get away from the cold. He wanted to have more perspective <laughs> and, and, and live and live a different culture. And you didn't want to come to Florida? And no. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he went to a lot of islands. Like he went in search of finding his next home, and he also wanted to start a business. Okay. And he, uh, when he went to Puerto Rico, he just found his home. <laughs> I studied music. Uh, my parents, I'm, I'm actually the um, connected to, not by blood, but Sister Sledge, uh, Kathy Sledge. Mm. We are family. We I'm pretending. Family. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's my auntie. Okay, I oh, see. I know that. All mm -hmm. right, gotcha. So that's your auntie. So yeah, yeah. Right. So that was an inspiration for me, amongst other things. And I started in music. They put me in the conservatory. And I studied mm -hmm. violin since I was seven. Wow. I, was, I was singing playing the violin in the conservatory till I was 19 mm -hmm. and I was also a visual artist during the day because I went to a visual arts high school and I became a sculptor mm. so art is my life yeah, art is you art is me gotcha that's me okay um, I went to Berkeley College of Music I got a scholarship and I went to Boston and lived there for five years wow. and then I went back to Puerto Rico after the five years and I've been in Puerto Rico I had been in Puerto Rico for 10 years mm -hmm. till until the hurricane hit until let me hurricane ask you a quick hit. question before I, before we get into that, yeah. when you went to Boston, did you feel a, a weird sense of being at home because that's where your dad is from? Oh, wow! That um, Boston was a constant search of identity. Yeah. Because I had not grown up in American culture. Mm -hmm. I had been visiting my family in Philly every summer, mm -hmm. but to actually make friends that were African American, mm -hmm. constantly surrounded by African American culture for the first time for a long period of time, it made me question who I was. It was also complicated because I'm so good at blending into two different cultures that some people wouldn't even know I was Puerto Rican or mm -hmm. didn't even understand where that I was coming from a whole different world mm -hmm. a whole different perspective a whole different country mm -hmm. really yeah uh, I don't know if it felt I, I don't know if I felt at home but I was finding myself I was finding home yeah and my and seeing my dad's point of view and understanding what he left behind to mm. be with us in Puerto Rico mm. and he left his old family all he had was us so it was a it was a journey. It was a, yeah. it was it was a journey. Capital was La Perla, a small barrio near the sea in San Juan. Many homes there were reduced to a roofless jumble. Puerto Rico remains in a state of crisis. Maria, it was a great equalizer, not for the right reasons, but it has made us one. I hate to tell you, Puerto Rico, but you've thrown our budget a little out of whack because we've spent a lot of money on Puerto Rico, and that's fine. We've saved a lot of lives. You can be very proud of all of your people, all of our people working together. Hurricane Maria hit Puerto Rico last September. It was the worst storm to hit the island in over 80 years. Thousands of homes and businesses were destroyed, and the storm left millions without electricity and water. It's horrible to be in that situation where you can't do anything. It's very sad. Puerto Rico is destroyed.
Hurricane Maria? Mm. Uh, uh, Hurricane Maria, I was actually singing in Boston that weekend because okay. I was flying back and forth from Puerto Rico to Boston. I still kept my contacts. Mm -hmm. So the weekend before Maria hit, um, my grandfather disappeared. Uh, he had a heart attack at the side of the road. He pulled over and had a heart attack. Mm. And so right before Irma hit, I'm sorry, we had two hurricanes right. that n pretty much in the same week. Right before Irma hit, we had to look for my grandfather's body. <laughs> for three days, my grandfather was missing and we were like right against the clock because the hurricane was about to hit and we still had to plan a funeral. It was hard. It was very hard because my grandfather... It's an understatement. No, yeah, especially for me and my mother yeah. because my grandfather um, actually abused us sexually both. So that was a journey of forgiving him and loving him despite the fact that I, I never confronted him about it and neither did my mother. And because she was the oldest one, she had to uh, organize his, her father's funeral somebody he, who she hadn't made peace with yet. So that was the first thing that happened before mm -hmm. Maria hit. Did you feel obligated to to search for him? Of course. I mean, yeah. I loved him. We all loved him. And that's something that happened as a child? When I was seven years old, yeah. With my mother, it happened for longer. I, she doesn't really talk about it, but it, I believe it was worse. So, um, but we loved him, mm -hmm. and you know, we didn't want to taint his memory. Mm -hmm. This is actually the first time I'm actually talking about it openly mm -hmm. because I do believe it's important to the family history mm -hmm. for us to re to say our history and to say what we've gone through as women, mm -hmm. because it was very, very uh, common in Puerto Rico, especially in those in my grandfather's times, for parents and cousins to molest women, especially in the countryside. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, the, being open about that is very important to me, mm. uh, especially knowing that that was the beginning of what Maria was going to bring. Mm. All right, go ahead, keep on going. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, we found my grandfather and we did his funeral and uh, um, Irma hit and it wasn't even that bad. She passed us over. Mm. So we were all pretty chill and then Maria came. Yeah. And as I said, I was in Boston. So my mother calls me and she's like, stay in Boston because there's a hurricane that's about to hit. And I knew it was category five to six, probably one of the strongest that mm -hmm. Caribbean had ever seen. Yeah. And I didn't want to leave my family alone. So I actually took a flight back to wow. go through the hurricane with my family to not leave them alone and to help them out. <laughs> so... <laughs> Ooh, I'm not, I've not been this detailed about the story these two years. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I'm from Florida. Yeah. We have hurricane season. Mm. We don't worry about category one, mm. mm -hmm. two, three, three. When three come around, we're like, ooh, the board games. Oh, yeah. Category four, <laughs> we like, But category five. To six. To six. six isn't even and the in funny the thing is, check this out. 20 years ago, mm. a category five was tiny. What mm. a, a category five is today? Really? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's a changed. different story. I did not know that. Wow. Go check that, go check that out. You know, know. Uh, hopefully we can put it on the screen. But a category five, mm -hmm. like 25 years ago, if I could just, it's like this. Yeah. And today it's like this. Yeah. It's massive. So wow. to come to a place like Florida, that's pretty much, we go through that every year. F to come to Puerto Rico, mm. that's scary. We hadn't had a hurricane in 20 years. For some reason, the hurricanes kept going under us or over us. Mm -hmm. So we became very, nah, Relax nah, about we're going to be fine. Yeah. God's got us. And, and then Maria came, and it, it changed our lives forever. As a country, as a people, as a culture. Yeah. I don't think it was a bad thing, though. I think it definitely made us very strong. Made us very strong. All right, so you go back home. So I go back home, and we prepare, and we fix up the house. and Board sure the walls up, board yeah. the windows. I couldn't stay in my house because I had my own apartment. Mm -hmm. uh, so I left it alone, and I stayed with my family, and we hid in the 
in the hallway. It was the only place that we didn't have any windows or anything like that. Mm -hmm. When Hurricane Maria hit, it shook the whole house, and my house was cement. It was one of the. It was. It was a strong house. Mm -hmm. And, and when it came to Maria, if, if you were poor, you were, you're screwed. If you at least had a, a stable home, you, would, you were gonna be okay. Mm -hmm. But it was, I call, I'll call it like the three little pig story. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna blow and blow your house down. If you have straw house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you have wooden house, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you have cement house, you might survive. Maybe. You might, you might be all right. Oh my gosh. Um, but the problem with Maria wasn't the storm in itself, at least for us, uh, it was, as for Puerto Rico, the aftermath was w way worse. Mm -hmm. The fact that we didn't have electricity, didn't have water, the food was rotting in supermarkets. The next morning I woke up, we cleaned up all the streets, and the second day we started trying to find my sister. Because my sister decided to stay in her boyfriend's house. Mind you, I had a dream a week before mm -hmm. warning me that my sister was going to be in underwater. Hmm. So I had told my sister, Patricia, pa uh, Paula, something's going to happen. Please don't stay in Jesus' house. Mm -hmm. And we listened to the radio, and so we, the next thing we know, Paula's staying in Bayamón. I didn't want her to. Mm -hmm. And we heard that Bayamón was underwater. Wow. So the next, the second day was to find my sister. And uh, thankfully, we get there, and she had gotten out quick before that water actually rose. Mm -hmm. um, so we found her and she was fine. Okay. Um, two weeks went by and every single day was was survival mode. Yeah. Today we're gonna go get gas mm -hmm. and we're gonna fight people in the streets to get this gas. Mm -hmm. And I had to wake up at 12 in the morning, mm -hmm. go to the gas station at one in the morning and go to sleep in the car and wait for the gas stations to open at eight in the morning. Then the cars would start moving and then we would be in the line all the way till 12 p.m. in mm -hmm. the afternoon. So I'd be there a whole day, 12 hours, just trying to get gas. Mm. Then the next day was, okay, today I'm gonna get money and we're gonna fight people in the street and we're gonna be in these long five, six hour lines because the only some ATMs were open. Um, and it was, uh, it, bring, it brought out the worst and the best in people. Yeah. We saw people helping each other. Mm -hmm. We saw people being selfish and, yeah. you know, cutting lines and doing selfish things. Mm. Um, I could imagine, though, because if I had a family, of course. I'm cutting that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, one, good, one good story uh -huh. that I, that this is why I love my people so much is that w musicians went out to the gas stations and started just jamming. That's it. And they would put like some tents and have some beer and people would be just like dancing in the lines while they're waiting 12 hours to get some gas. So. What can you do? <laughs> you know, you might as well put a show on. Yeah. Somebody will give you a dollar. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. I would have done the same thing too. I like, I'd sing a song. Yeah. <laughs> I understand. Okay. Six months on, the most vulnerable people on the island still feel neglected. Charities say they registered a rise in violence against women as a result of the lack of security and electricity at night, leaving women fearful to leave their homes. Puerto Rico is a US territory. Its citizens, who are Americans, have had to step in where the government has let them down. Hell. It's just been horrible, horrible. More than six months on, at least 150,000 people are still without electricity, and at least 200,000 insurance claims remain open. Did you ever feel like the rest of the world was ignoring you? Or did, you, or did, did that not even cross your mind? Um, I had no idea what was going on in the States because we had no connection at all. Hmm. It wasn't until I got to Philadelphia that I realized it was it wasn't it was in the news. Hmm. So I, you thought it ain't, nobody even knew. No, no, the con we had no connection, no no Wi-Fi, no nothing. How does it make you feel that people knew and you didn't? You personally didn't see help. I didn't see help. Yeah, when you when you were there, yeah. you go back to Philadelphia and you see everybody knows about this, yeah. and yet. I didn't see any assistance. Yeah, I don't know. I, and Trump said that he sent all this help. Mm -hmm. But the level of catastrophe that we were going through, it was a national emergency. Of course. It was like, you're telling me you can send all these troops to Iraq in like two weeks mm -hmm. to invade a country. Mm -hmm. 
but you can't send enough people and military to save people stuck in their homes in the middle of nowhere. Your own people, really. Your own people. Mm -hmm. And it's not the same as Houston or Florida. It's not just a city. Mm -hmm. It's a whole island with a co complex top topography. Is that how you say it? So, uh, topography. Yeah, okay, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's very mountainous. So a lot of people were starving, dying, mm -hmm. and we needed serious military, all, and all the forces that America might have to save people. Now what happens? You know, you, you, you've come back to Philadelphia. Yeah. And so, yeah, like my, my, one of my aunts in Philly, thankfully she paid a pilot under the table, a pilot that was bringing medicine into the island to get us in the, in the plane and get us out. Everyone. My whole family, my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, two dogs, two cats. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Why go to Puerto Rico mm -hmm. instead of bring the family? To Philly. What? I'm sorry. What? Because you, you went, you went back to be strong with your family. Yeah. Was is there a chance that they could have come to United States, to Philly, with you, to be with you, mm. instead of the opposite? Instead of me going back to Puerto yeah. Rico. Mm -hmm. I just felt it in my heart that I have to had to come back. Okay. It wasn't gonna be good for me to just be out there worrying. Mm -hmm. That wasn't gonna be good for me. Okay. I understand. I just wanted to be with them. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what happens now? You, you've come back. So um, we came back to Philly and we were all staying with my aunt and it just became too much of a bother. Uh, so, you know, people say they want to help you, but it doesn't, they don't really know how long it takes for somebody to really get back on their feet, especially in America. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's like you're starting from scratch all of a sudden and you didn't even choose it. So we all went our separate <coughs> ways. My brother went to the, the military. He went, he became a Marine. Uh, and I went up to New York as a, sing I'm a singer, so mm -hmm. I'm trying to find gigs. I'm trying to find work. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to find help. Uh, I'm trying to see where I'm going to settle. Mm -hmm. So I was back and forth in Philly for seven months, going to New York, trying to find work. Then I finally went to New York and I met my boyfriend who oh. took care, a lot, really good care of me and really was the only person, he was a friend, mm -hmm. but he was really the only person who understood how much help I really needed. Right. Because um, after a month or two, I was getting kicked out of, every, of everywhere. You know, people didn't want me around, people didn't want us around. You know, you're just invading people's privacy, mm -hmm, but you mm -hmm. don't have the means. So if it weren't for him, mm -hmm. I don't I don't know where I'd be right now. <laughs> you know, Sometimes there's always you, an angel. You, yeah, you, know? you get a little angel to just mm -hmm. come and pick you up. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I'm 